Okay, this is a video on how to repair a Moza R5 steering wheel. Uh, this will also apply to the R3, the R9, pretty much anything. It's just the paddles inside. They're very similar and they all have um, the same fault on them. If you look at this steering wheel real close, you can kind of see that the right hand paddle is not quite the same as the left. And you'll mostly notice this by feel. It won't necessarily be by looks. Uh, but you'll get bad shifting. It'll either happen on the bottom or the top. The inside parts break and uh, that feel is kind of bad. You can see how I can push down here. And you'll get a click, but it's really not good. And if you look really closely, I'll try to come in close. You can see that. I'll turn a light on. You can see that in that little corner right there, there's a little bit of dust. And the dust is just, it's off kilter now, so it's wearing away. Okay, so this is how to fix this. The first thing to start off with, uh, the things you're going to need um, is a number two Phillips screwdriver. Nothing complicated there. A number three Allen key. I have a whole set, but uh, you can get those. They're pretty cheap anywhere, Amazon, etc. And the third thing you're going to need is a 3D printer. If you don't have a 3D printer, there's a way to get around that. You can use online printing sites. I'll put some up on the screen now, as well as the 3D printing file in the comments below. Uh, you can download that, and it's just these things. These are what break, and this is what you'll need to print, or go online and get somebody else to print them, buy them, they send them to you. The other option you can have is to get these printed and send them off into a metal fabrication site. I'll put some of those up as well. Um, and what they'll do is they'll take this thing and turn it into metal, and that's the way you're going to be 100% sure it's never, ever going to break. Okay, so first thing you need to do is there's six screws on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all Allen keys, and they go through the whole thing into the base on the back of the, of the uh, steering wheel. So I'll uh, take those off now. Okay, we have all those off. You can tell by these screws here, they uh, have a little bit of uh, Loctite on them. Uh, that's there for a reason. Uh, it'd be good to put some back on when you put this back together, but this thing is quite long. It goes through the whole steering wheel and holds the base back on. So when we take this apart, you have to be careful. There's a power slash uh, connection and control wire that is going to want to break. So you want to be careful when you do that. You don't want to really tear this apart. Uh, these are all the same as well. It doesn't matter how you put them back together. So this face will come off. Um, this is actually replaceable as well. You can get new ones of these or different ones if you've got like a Formula One style one. That's the inside of this. Nothing inside of this part will fall apart. So you don't really have to worry about that. But if you lift this up, you can see there is a wire there. So we're going to have to disconnect that on the inside. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. There's screws on the back you have to take off. And you can kind of leave this connected and do it once you get the back plate off. Or you can reach your hands in there and try to get it disconnected. I usually take the back plate off because it gives you better access. There's a board in there, a PCB board, and it's good to have a little bit of pressure on that before you release it. So we'll get to these screws. There's one, two, three, four. I think there's only four. So just be careful in this part. This is just regular inside computer wires, so we don't want to uh, break any of this kind of stuff. So here we go. Oh, the only thing you really got to notice uh, with this screwdriver, it has to have enough space to clear inside that. So some of your ones you might have at home with a changeable bit might not fit. So you got to have the proper screwdriver. This is the only one I had. It's a little shorty uh, that would fit in that hole. And uh, make sure you have a big enough end. It doesn't have to be a number two. Uh, just you don't want to strip these inside there. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Okay, so when you lift this off, there's springs on the inside. They're going to fall out. There's no way to do this where they don't fall out, so don't worry about it. It's pretty easy to put it back together, albeit a little bit finicky. 
Uh, the one thing I will warn you, I've had this apart before and kind of did a bodge job on it where I used Bondo to replace, uh, to fix one of these just until I could get the 3D printed done properly and stuff like that. So all we're going to do is lift this off. Uh, some of the screws might not have come all the way out. They'll fall out when we do this though. I am holding a mic, so I'm trying to do this with one hand. I'm going to actually put you down. So there it is on the inside. You can see that one cable attached to the PCB. A very beautiful PCB, by the way. Um, we're going to disconnect that. And then, uh, I mean, you don't really have to. I just found it easier to work around this with it disconnected. And it's pretty easy to do. Okay, with this part, you can see what one of these looks like. I'll hold it up to the camera as best I can. Oh, they're attached to uh, the paddles in the front. So there is a, the metal paddle is actually attached to a plastic piece on the inside. You can kind of see that. There's two screws attaching it on, and that's where the springs sit. They push back on the paddles to return them to their neutral position. You can see this one over here where I've bondoed it. I'll get them apart, and then I'll show you where the fail point is. Okay, here's one of them out now. And you can see this thing here, um, where I bondoed across those two, is where the fail point is. Um, it's kind of hard with that one. Maybe I'll take the other one off so I can show you the fail point is on that as well. Okay, so this is the good one of the two. You can see that uh, connection there, and it's right in between where this pivot point is and the main body where the spring is, is where it breaks. It breaks right across there. You can see where I kind of repaired it. It was on this side over here, which is the bottom part, or no, the top part of the shifter. And it cracked right across there, fractured across. Um, we'll continue on with the repair. At the very end of the video, I'll explain why I think this is kind of a shitty thing for Moza to do and why these parts don't really cost that much. But we'll, uh, we'll go through and we'll replace both of these with these ones. You can see how they're very similar. Uh, and we'll put it back together and uh, see what it sounds like. Okay, those are pretty tight together, all back in. Again, I printed red, not because of any other reason, just red is all I have. And uh, 
it's uh, not really expensive, but uh, I want to use up my red stuff. So, okay, uh, so these are all back together. We have uh, both of them in here. Now, the difference between these, which is, looks like a thermoplast kind of uh, injection molding, and these is they're 3D printed. The ones in here are 3D printed, and they're 3D printed with ABS, and that's pretty important. Now, you can use PLA if you want, which is like kind of like a mixture between plastic and cornstarch, not super strong. It's not really good in the light, and it doesn't like heat. I don't know what this thing put, outputs in heat if it's super duper high. This is a pretty big motor, so your acceptance piece and attached to a pretty big motor. So I would say it has a, quite a bit of heat. I wouldn't trust PLA or any sort of weaker material inside of this. ABS um, or get it sent off to a place that can print it out in steel or aluminum or whatever. It's just something that's pretty heavy because these pieces do take uh, quite a pounding. You want to be at least the equal material as as these paddles here. So we're going to snap all this back together. I'll show you how these springs go in here. They basically just sit like this on top of each one of those screws. And that's it. So you want to put that on and then you're going to flip it over and you don't want to hear any springs fall. If you hear springs fall, you've done it wrong. If not, you're all good. You can set it down. Just make sure to keep a little bit of pressure on it. Otherwise, they're going to pop off. Three screws back or four screws back in. Again, be gentle with these. They're, uh, they're metal. They're painted. They're good. But they're not the best quality in the world. That one flipped over when I put it in. You drop those in there. Okay, and make sure to apply lots of pressure, but brace it with your hand on the back. You want to pick it up because you don't want to put all that pressure on your buttons in the front and scratch them all up or anything like that. Okay, so the back plate's all back on. Uh, give it a little shake. Again, you don't want to hear anything other than the, the physical buttons moving in the front. They don't have faceplate on them, so they're going to jiggle a little bit. But you want to make sure you don't hear any springs inside. Um, that's at this point, you don't want to go any further. I haven't tightened these down fully either because I don't want to wear them out before I test. Make sure that your paddles work. Um, just give them a little couple clicks. See what they feel like. Okay, I gotta do, but I can't do it with one hand, so hold on. Okay, so we tested it out. We had a little problem. There's not enough clicking in there, so I think we probably have to go in and tighten those up a little bit more. Again, 3D printing is not an exact science, so they might be need to be shaved down a little bit. Um, I noticed mine were a little bit rounder on the back end, so we might need to adjust that. So aside from that, we'll go back in and see what we can do. Okay, so we've put uh, the back back on this. Uh, all I had to do was some minor shaving down. Um, the backs weren't flat enough, so it wasn't clicking properly. Tighten these down. You put this back in. Once you tighten this back part down, you put this uh, back piece on. Connect the little connector, uh, and then gently flip it over, and put your steering wheel cover back front, uh, back on. Uh, make sure all your buttons feel okay before you do the final tightening down. Um, I would suggest not tightening too tight, depending on how good your print is. It will depend on how well these the clickers work in your uh, in your paddles. But you can see now. All good. That one sounds a little bit different, but uh, I think there's some permanent damage where that was broken for so long. And you can see everything's all lined up much better now. Hopefully uh, they'll last for quite a while. Like I say, make sure to go with ABS or get them printed in aluminum. Um, if you can print in aluminum, you don't have to worry about fitment. Uh, as long as your 3D print file that you got from this video is good, it should be okay. Um, so that's the end of the tutorial on how to fix 
these steering wheels. Um, they're fairly similar, like I say, for the R3, R5, and R9. Just a little bit different equipment inside. Same print file, though. Um, so if you, you've got everything you need from that, that's the end of this. Uh, from now on, I'm going to speak as to why Moza has kind of dropped the ball when it comes to this kind of stuff. So um, I've had this wheel since December. It's currently June. So really kind of like five months of use. I say once I got it fitted up and, and going strong, maybe four or five months of use. I don't know how many hours, but quite a few. I play nearly every day and I race for at least a couple of races a day. So I would say mid to heavy use. And it only really lasted five, five, uh, five months. So you can see the kind of quality of this now in my previous work i worked a lot with uh, airplane parts and manufacturing of airplanes and uh, rockets and stuff like that and i can tell you that a part printed like this or thermoformed or however they did it i'm going to say it's, it's pretty cheap um, the difference between what this is and the red ones that i put in is probably only like about four grams or so and it's just basically filling in all these cavities that you see here so all those little parts where they put uh, bracing in is not enough and I've just a print that fills all that in that's it that's all that's different really not much you can actually see the wear on that I don't know, this won't focus but you can see the wear on that side already starting to build up and then on this one same thing, pretty heavy wear on the inside. Uh, so that would be probably my other biggest criticism, aside from the uh, overall robustness of these clickers inside here. These should, in my opinion, at least be metal. And like, if you want to save a lot of money, because that's kind of, this is a budget direct drive thing, R3 and the R5s. This is where you're going to save money by not making these metal. But if you did make the metal, they're going to last a long time. And at the very least, print them solid. It's not like five grams of plastic costs literal cents um, that you're adding to this. And it's obviously a fail point. I've seen quite a few posts about it. The other thing I would say that's a bit dodgy about it is the plastic to plastic connection. So this acceptance piece inside the wheel is also plastic. So you have these, they pivot like this, and that's how they click. But because of that, um, you have a plastic on plastic wearing down. And eventually that is going to fail, um, just because of the design of it. The other thing I would say is the way that this is all put together. I'm not an engineer, it's mostly a machinist, so I can't really tell you how I would make it differently. But I can tell you that the way they have this design in here is odd the pivot piece and the way that it attaches on here with the spring and then these are printed universally so you can see there's a little fuzzy bit inside there that's where the spring on here it gets accepted in i didn't put it in because i don't really care but it's meant to kind of like deaden the feel of that click a little bit and the reason there's none on this side is because when you flip it over for the other side it's the other one and if you look at these the fuzzy bit is on the opposite one so they just print these universally i would like to see these printed bespokely and made in a different way that they're stronger you could potentially engineer your way out of making them in a way that's going to cost you a lot of money so that's the r5 wheel that's the kind of issues that i have with it overall it's a very good wheel uh, i enjoy it the motor's really good the profile is really good the button feel is really good. I just think that the quality based on what you paid for might not be quite there. And like that's a very small fail part. From what I can see, the only thing I would say is the way that this gets put together. That you have to take the back off in order to get that on there. Like this big round acceptance piece. It's kind of odd that you have a single wire in there. Also that wire is like, I don't know, four inches long. So you really only have like two inches to deal with to try to get it out. It's kind of finicky. I guess it's really not designed to come apart. Um, I could probably design a thing, something like a, a quick release that would make this a lot easier. 
Also, these bolts going through the whole thing is also kind of odd. So you can buy steering wheels for this that are different. In order to do that, you have to detach the whole thing in order to just get the steering wheel on. It's an odd choice. Anyway, I would say design is probably not the best thing about this. And then the build quality on the inside, obviously, we're having issues, is, uh, is not the best. Um, as far as long-term use, I'll let you guys know in the comments how long this lasts for, these prints. Again, everything you need is down in the comments, and uh, good luck, and see you guys next time.